Hey guys, Brad coming at you here with just one card to show. As you guys saw in my last video, I hit the my second Favre patch auto out of Immaculate. Well, I sold that, and this is one of the cards I got with it. I got another one coming as well, and I got like a really good deal on this card. Like It was so good, it's one of those you go back before you pay for it, and you're like, you're looking at the picture and reading the listing again to make sure you didn't miss like a smudged auto or a crease or real banged up corner or something. And it's fine. It's just one of those cards that just kind of got overlooked. I'll tell you what I paid for. 141 bucks. These cards are always 175 plus pretty much. Anything three colors, 175 plus. So 11 out of 25. I got it for 141 bucks. And it didn't end at an awkward time either. So this is <laughs> case one of why I never do auctions unless it's someone like LeBron James or like Steph Curry's hot right now or Connor McDavid in hockey or something. Unless you got the really hot guy that everyone's searching, do not auction your cards, folks. I'm just trying to say, you know, let you make some more money. I'm just saying. If he'd have put that up for 175 bucks, he would have sold it right away. He auctions it, gets 141 for it. So that's why me, dude, I probably auction. I mean, you know, I sell quite a bit. I may auction 10 cards a year. I don't play the auction game. That's just for stuff like that. Like really, like you would have easily got 175 bucks on a buy it now or buy it now best offer. So I was really psyched to add a Dan Marino from this. Because I didn't get one from last year. I still want to get one from last year. But gorgeous card. And, uh, yeah, I think I'll talk about the hobby a little bit. Somebody actually uh, <laughs> messaged me the other day and was like, you know, what do you think of this... Uh, Panini Eminence or whatever coming out, and he's like, just what do you think in general about, like, because he's like, I heard you say, you know, Panini's been the better company the last year, which I did say that, and it is freaking true. But when I say better company, <laughs> I'm not saying they're even good, <laughs> all right? I'm just saying they're the best of the worst, okay? Because <laughs> both companies suck. But when I said that, I'm talking mid to high end products and the value you get out of them on a case by case basis. If you were going to spend two thousand dollars on a product, Panini was better than Tops. All right, you would get more out of Panini, more value, whether you were doing for PC selling out of, for instance, if you bought Immaculate, than you would buying Five Star or whatever, you know. You'd get more value on a consistent case-by-case -case basis buying Panini last year than you would have tops. On mid to high-end product. I'm not talking a low-end crap. I'm not talking Panini Crown Royale that came out this week. That stuff sucks. Don't touch it, folks. If you go to a card shop and you're like, oh, that's kind of affordable, you've been warned. It sucks. The silhouettes are nice, but that's like a couple of case, you know. Don't. Just don't bother with Panini Crown Royale. And my biggest thing, like, uh, with the Eminence, came out $6,000 a box for basketball. What in this current market, why in the heck would you think you could put out a $6,000 a box product? Who thought of this in the Panini room? Uh, you know what we could do? We're going to put gold and silver in cards. And we're going to charge $6,000 a box. $850 a hit. This is going to work. Like, who in a room thought of that and said, this is going to work? There's not one guy, barring the one-on-one cut autos, that I can't get out of a box of NT, a box of Immaculate, a box of Flawless, so on and so forth. There's not one guy in there that I can't get in every other product. Why would I pay 6000 bucks? Now, sure, there's a f guys in the foreign market that sure ripped it. But 
just, like, come on, guys. Use your freaking heads. Who in the, I just want to know, like, who in the Panini boardroom when this came up? And who chose $6,000? Like, there's no way you had that much money put into the product. I would hope not. If you did, then you're morons. But, oh, gosh. that So that's atrocious. Another thing I'm down with Panini on that's just, they got to out, they got to do away with it, is the point system. At first, I was like, this could work if ran correctly, but the chances of it being ran correctly are about 2%. Well, sadly, the 98% came true. It was designed for lower-end guys not to be redemptions in products, and then in this way, you could either pile up points to get something, maybe they put it in the store that they already had laying around, maybe it's redemptions that expired, whatever the case might be. Or you can just choose another player. So for instance, let's say Jay Ajayi didn't sign this year. And they put in a 250-point card in select. Okay, we'll just pick a product. Well, the idea, let's say David Johnson didn't sign for the product either. He was also 250 points. Well, the idea was you can do what you want with the 250 points. Let's say you're a Cardinals fan. Well, you don't care about a Jay Ajayi redemption. I can just go get the David Johnson when it comes in. Brilliant. Problem is, it's all a freaking scam. Because, like, David Johnson blew up tonight. Let's say that card came back this week. They'd have it up there for 600 points, even though the point card was for 250. I've seen it multiple times. Like, Martavius Bryant last year had a card. It was a 400-point card from Martavius Bryant. I even got this confirmed by the guy when he hit it. I was like, who's the 400-point card? He said Martavius Bryant. This is the guy who did the product. Now, he doesn't handle the point system. That's not his thing. But the points come out, and obviously he had a pretty good rookie year. This was months after. What are they up at? 700 points. There wasn't even a 700-point card in the product. So even if the guy was mistaken and said, oh, maybe I was wrong, maybe it wasn't the 400-point card, there wasn't a 700-point card in the product. Oh, so that's a complete scam. You need to do away with it. I've actually emailed him twice and told him, your idea of it could have worked. But everybody's on to it, and we all think it's a scam. That's what I told them. So, I was like, your original, the idea of it's not horrible. I don't have a problem with it. But we obviously can't trust you to run it. We just don't trust you. And that's Panini's biggest problem, is no one trusts them. Because we always think you're trying to get one over on us. Now me, I just look past it all, because I think you're all scumbags. And I just try to enjoy the product because it's a hobby and I just try to enjoy it. So when I say stuff like Panini, I think, has been the best company the last year, I'm talking from a value case-by-case -case standpoint for mid- to high-end products. I'm not talking, uh, <laughs> you know, how they conduct business, okay? <laughs> I'm not talking that. So let me be very clear with that. Because I got an email, he's like, you know, and it, and I like getting stuff like that. That's hobby talk. I like that. I have no problem with him messaging me either. And kind of like, what do you mean by that? And it's a guy I hardly knew, but I, I appreciated it. So feel free. Comment below. Speak freely with me. All right? Let me know what you think. I mean, like tops this year. You know how I say Panini, I think, is... I don't, I don't know how to say it. I don't want to say better run business. Because if you were a well-run business, you wouldn't be scamming people. I'm just saying. But maybe more business savvy. Maybe smarter guys running it. The execution's not always great. But I'll give you... And I think Tops is just ignorant. I think they're just not ran well. I'll give you a perfect example. Tops Tribute Baseball. I already talked about the first time it came out... Autographs all smudged. They smudged in the package, got on another card. You know, autographs were a mess, right? So they say, you know, the ones we could save, blah, blah, blah. We're going to retreat them. We're going to put it back out. Okay, you screwed up. You're stupid. Came back out, right? Well, guess what they forget to do? They forget to put six relic cards that were supposed to be in every case. 
So you're doing coming out with a product for a second time, and you still can't get it right. So they had to send breakers or whoever bought a case, a pack with six relics in it. All right, and then they have the nerve to charge like twenty three hundred bucks for a case. What's coming out of there that's twenty three hundred dollars worth? That's literally double the price it should be. Because Tribute's a nice-looking product. And that's the thing with Tops. They make some nice-looking stuff. But there's just, like, no value in it. Like, you can't charge $2,300 and all I'm getting is David Cohn, Jim Rice, Dennis Eckersley, um, Sonny Gray. You know, guys like that repeatedly. And I'll throw in a Mark McGuire for you. And I'll throw in one Johnny Bench for you. As your two case hits. But you're going to get a bunch of Javier Baez, Jorge Solers at $2,300? And then get only a couple patch cards? Like, none of these are even patch autographs. At $2,300? Like, get your price point right, folks. You know, like, those guys are fine players, but value wise, stink. Let's just face it. Like, if you paid a hundred and something dollars a pack for tribute, 160 bucks or whatever it is, and you pull Jim Rice and Jorge Soler as your autographs, which, and you get one good relic of, let's say, Hank Aaron for 165 bucks, and that's a common pack. That isn't, oh, that was the worst pack in there by far. I mean, just, I just don't know what these companies are thinking of when they come out with a price point. Like, who said, yeah, that's worth 2300 bucks. And then another problem, card shops can't keep up. Because the day, 24 hours after Tribute comes out, Blow has it for 300 bucks cheaper a case. They have it for like 1900 something bucks. 24 hours afterwards. So the problem is, is the card shop gets it. They're selling it. At the price, you know, that it was designed to be sold for, let's say. So let's say it's at $2,300. bucks. they are selling a case for. Well, now people go on blowout and see it for nineteen fifty. Of course no one's going to buy it from the card shop. They can get it 350 bucks cheaper on the first day of release. Ugh. So at least Panini has something in place that helps protect the card shops, kind of. For like, is it like 10 days or something? I I should have uh, looked that up for. I know the card shop guy says there's like 7, 10 days where you got you can't go below a certain point. So like, let's say the product cost, let's say it's 75 bucks. And they gave it to you for 58 bucks. But you're supposed to sell it for 75 bucks. Alright, they do that. So blowout has to sell it at 75 bucks. And then if the card shop wants to, they can also sell it at 75 bucks and still make profit. The profit they need to make. Well, the problem is, with like Topps product, like high tech, a card shop had to pay 55 bucks for it. Blowout on the first day has it at 62 bucks. Card shop can't sell that for 62 bucks. You know, there's only a $7 difference between a pre-sale from a direct company to a secondary one like Blowout can sell it to us for 62 bucks. They should be selling for like 70 bucks. You know. I'm just saying. That's what's killing card shops. They can't compete. Because if they try to match Blowout price, they aren't making anything. There's all the profits gone if they match Blowout price. Because they aren't going to sell a thousand cases like Blowout is. So let's say Blowout makes... Four dollars on every box. Well, if they sell a thousand cases, bam, no problem. But the card shop's gonna sell two cases. They ain't gonna keep their doors open. So that's just a little hobby thing of when I make little comments. That's what I'm talking about. I don't like where the hobby's going. Of course, it's all. One company has to pay, you know, X amount of million dollars for a license. When it used to be split four or five ways, it's split one way, consumer gets dumped on. Because they have to make a certain amount of profit. I don't blame them. 
But that's why we have 30 products, 30-something foot, football products from Panini this year, I guess. I think they said there was going to be 33 or something. There should be 12. One a month. One football product a month. That's what there should be. Four high-end, four mid-end, four lower-end. Bam. That's what it should be. I'll give you one a month. That would help solve a lot of problems. But, I don't know. That's just me rambling. Only one card took over 15 minutes. I'm probably going to get 10 viewers on this. <laughs> so I apologize. And as for the Dolphins, that was freaking... I'm not even in the mood to talk football. That's how disgusted I am with that performance. That was freaking ugly. I, I'm not even in the mood to talk football. So sorry. Bye-bye. Love you all. And until next time, have a good one if I don't see you before Christmas. But I think somebody said they had something coming to me. So I'll probably see you before Christmas. But if not, Merry Christmas. Bye-bye, guys.